Nana Shastra Vicharanaika Nipano Sadharma Samstapako Lokanamita Karino Tripuvane Manya Saranya Karo Radha Krishna Padaravinda Pashuna Nande Namataliko Vande Rupa Sanatana Raghu Yugo Sri Jeeva Gopala Go I offer my respectful obeisances unto the six Goswamis, namely Sri Rupa Goswami, Sri Sanatan Goswami, Sri Raghunath Bhat Goswami, Sri Jeeva Das Goswami, Wait a minute, that's not Sri Jiva Das. That's Sri Jiva Goswami. <laughs> Sri Gopal Bhatta Goswami, who are very expert in scrutinizingly studying all the revealed scriptures with the aim of establishing eternal religious principles for the benefit of all human beings. Thus they're honored all over the three worlds and they're worth taking shelter of because they're absorbed in the mood of the gopis and are engaged in the transcendental loving service of Radha and Krishna. So we're reading from the Nectar of Devotion. It's the summary study of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, which was written by Rupa Goswami. And this summary study is presented by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And this is reading from the scans of the original uh, documents, copyright 1970, this kind of press. So this is text 22. Qualities of Krishna further explained. 31. Heroic. A person who is very enthusiastic in military activities, an expert in releasing different kinds of weapons is called heroic. Regarding Krishna's heroism in fighting, there is the following statement. My dear killer of the enemy, just as the elephant while taking bath in the lake destroys all the lotus stems within the water by swinging its trunk, so, simply by moving your arms, which are compared to the trunks of elephants, you have killed so many lotus-like enemies. Regarding Krishna's expertise in releasing weapons, when Jarasandha, along with 13 divisions of soldiers, attacked Krishna's army, they were unable to hurt even one soldier on the side of Krishna. This was due to Krishna's expert military training. This is unique in the history of military art. 32. Compassionate. A person who is unable to bear another's distress is called compassionate. Krishna's compassion for distressed persons was exhibited when he released all the kings imprisoned by Magadendra. While dying, Grandfather Bhisma prayed to Krishna and described him as the sun which eradicates darkness. The kings who were imprisoned by Magadendra put into dark cells, and when Krishna appeared there, the darkness immediately disappeared, just as if the sun had risen. In other words, although Magadendra was able to imprison so many kings, upon the appearance of Krishna, they were all released. Krishna did this out of his sincere compassion for the kings. Krishna's compassion was also exhibited when Grandfather Bhisma was lying on the bed of arrows which had been shot through his body. While lying in this position, Bhisma was very anxious to see Krishna, and thus Krishna appeared there. Upon seeing the pitiable condition of Bhisma, Krishna began speaking with tears in his eyes. Not only was he shedding tears, but he also forgot himself in his compassion. Therefore, instead of offering obeisances to Krishna directly, Devotees offer obeisances to his compassionate nature. Actually, 
because Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, it's very difficult to approach him. But the devotees taking advantage of his compassionate nature, which is represented by Radharani, always pray to Radharani for Krishna's compassion. 33. Respectful. A person who shows adequate respect to a spiritual master, a Brahmin, an old person, is to be understood as being respectful. When superior persons assembled before Krishna, Krishna first of all offered respect to his spiritual master, then to his father, and then to his elder brother Balaram. In this way, Lord Krishna, the lotus eyed, was completely happy and pure at heart in all of his dealings. Gentle. Any person who neither becomes impudent nor exhibits a puffed up nature is called gentle. The example of Krishna's gentle behavior was manifested when he was coming to the arena of the Rajasuya sacrifice arranged by Maharaj Yudhisthira. Krishna's older cousin, Maharaj Yudhisthira, Krishna's older cousin. Maharaj Yudhisthira knew that Krishna was the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and he was attempting to get down from his chariot to receive Krishna. But before Yudhisthira could get down, Lord Krishna got down from his own chariot and immediately fell at the feet of the king. Even though Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he never forgets to show social etiquette in his dealings. 35. Liberal Any person who is by his natural behavior very mild is called liberal. A statement by Uddhava after the Shramantaka jewel plundering confirms that Krishna is so kind and favorable that if a servitor is accused even of great offenses, Krishna does not take this into consideration. He simply considers the service that's rendered by his devotee. 36. Shy. A person who sometimes exhibits humility and bashfulness is called shy. As described in the Lalita Madhava, Krishna's shyness was manifested when he lifted Govardhan Hill by the little finger of his left hand. All of the gopis were observing Krishna's wonderful achievement, and Krishna was also smiling at seeing the gopis. When Krishna's glance went over the breasts of the gopis, his hand began to shake, and upon seeing his hand shake, all of the cowherd men underneath the hill became a little disturbed. Then there was a tumultuous roaring sound, and they began to pray to Krishna for safety. At this time, Lord Balaram was smiling, thinking, that these coward men had been frightened by the shaking of Govardhan Hill. But seeing Balaram smile, Krishna thought that Balaram had understood his mind in observing the breasts of the gopis immediately became bashful. 37. Protector of Surrendered Souls Krishna is the protector of all surrendered souls. Some enemy of Krishna's was enlivened with the thought that he needn't fear Krishna because if he simply surrendered unto him, Krishna would give him all protection. Krishna is sometimes compared with the moon, which does not hesitate to distribute its soothing rays even on the houses of the Chandalas and untouchables. 38. Happy Any person who is always joyful and untouched by any distress is called happy. As far as Krishna's enjoyment is concerned, <clears throat> it stated that the ornaments which decorated the bodies of Krishna and his queens were beyond the dreams of Kubera, the treasurer of the heavenly kingdom. The constant dancing before the doors of Krishna's palaces was not to be imagined even by the demigods in the heavenly kingdom. In the heavenly kingdom, Indra always sees the dancing of society girls. But even Indra could not imagine how beautiful were the dances being performed at the gates of Krishna's palaces. Gauri means white woman, and Lord Shiva's wife is called Gauri. The beautiful women residing in the palaces of Krishna were so much whiter than Gauri that they were compared to the moonshine, and they were constantly visible to Krishna. Therefore, no one can be enjoying more than Krishna. The conception of enjoyment is beautiful women, ornaments, riches, 
And all of these things were fabulously present in the palaces of Krishna, defeating even the imagination of Kuvera, Lord Indra, or Lord Shiva. Not even a slight distress can touch Krishna. Once, some of the gopis went to the place where the brahmins were performing sacrifices and said, My dear wives of the brahmins, you must know that not even a, a slight smell of distress can touch Krishna. He knows no loss. He knows no defamation. He has no fear. He has no anxiety. He does not know calamity. He's simply encircled by the dances of Braj and is enjoying the company of the rasa dance. 39. Well-wisher of his devotees. It's said of Krishna's devotees that if they offer even a little water or a tulsi leaf in devotion to Lord Vishnu, Lord Vishnu is so kind that he will sell himself to them. Krishna's favoritism towards his devotees was exhibited in his fight with Bhishma. When Grandfather Bhishma was lying at the point of death on the bed of arrows, Krishna was present before him. And Bhishma was remembering how Krishna had been kind to him on the battlefield. Krishna had promised that in the battle of Kurikshetra, he would not even touch a weapon to help either side. He would remain neutral. Although Krishna was Arjuna's charioteer, he had promised that he would not help Arjuna by using any weapon. But one day, Bhishma, in order to nullify Krishna's promise, exhibited his fighting spirit so magnificently against Arjuna that Krishna was obliged to get down from his chariot. Taking up a broken chariot wheel, he ran toward Grandfather Bhishma as a lion runs toward an elephant to kill it. Grandfather Bhishma remembered this scene and he later praised Krishna for his glorious favoritism towards his devotee, Arjuna, even at the risk of breaking his own promise. 40. Controlled by love. Krishna becomes obliged to the loving spirit of the devotee and not exactly to the service rendered. No one can serve Krishna completely. He's so complete and self-sufficient he has no need of any service from the devotee. It's the devotee's attitude of love and affection for Krishna that makes him obliged. A very nice example of this obligatory behavior was manifested when Sudam Vipra went to Krishna's palace. Sudama Vipra had been a class friend of Krishna's and due to his poverty he was induced by his wife to see Krishna to request some aid. When Sudama Vipra reached Krishna's palace, Krishna received him very well, and both he and his wife washed the feet of Sudama Vipra, showing respect to the Brahmin. Remembering his loving affairs with Sudama in their childhood, Krishna began to shed tears while receiving him. Another instance of Krishna's obligation to his devotee is described in the 10th canto, 9th chapter, 14th verse, Srimad Bhagavatam, where Sukadev Goswami tells, King Parikshit. My dear King, when Mother Yasoda was perspiring, tired of trying to bind Krishna up with rope, Krishna agreed to allow her to bind him. Krishna, as a child, was disturbing his mother by his naughty activities, and she wanted to bind him up. Mother Yasoda brought some rope from the house and tried to tie up the child, but she could not tie a knot due to the shortness of the rope. She tied together many ropes, but when she finished, still the rope was too short. After a while, she felt very tired and began to perspire. At that time, Krishna agreed to be bound up by his mother. In other words, no one can bind Krishna by any means other than love. He's bound only by obligation to his devotees because of their ecstatic love for him. 41 all auspicious. A person who is always engaged in auspicious welfare activities for everyone is known as all auspicious. After the disappearance of Lord Krishna from this planet, Uddhava began to remember the activities of the Lord and said, Krishna satisfied all great sages by his wonderful pastimes. He demolished all of the money activities of the cruel royal order, protected all pious men, and killed all cruel fighters on the battlefield. 
Therefore, he is auspicious. He is all auspicious for all men. 42, most powerful. A person who can always put his enemy into calamities is called powerful. When Krishna was present on this planet, just as the powerful sun drives all darkness to take shelter in caves, he drove away all of his enemies who fled like owls to take shelter beyond his sight. 43. All famous. A person who becomes well known due to his spotless character is called famous. It is stated that the diffusion of Krishna's fame is like the moonshine which turns darkness into light. In other words, if Krishna consciousness is preached all over the world, the darkness of ignorance and the anxiety of material existence will turn into the whiteness of purity, peacefulness, and prosperity. When the great sage Narada was chanting the glories of the Lord, the bluish line on the neck of Lord Shiva disappeared. Upon seeing this, Gauri, the wife of Lord Shiva, suspected Lord Shiva of being someone else disguised as her husband, and out of fear she immediately left his company. Upon hearing the chanting of Krishna's name, Lord Balaram saw that his dress had become white, although he was generally accustomed to a bluish dress. And the coward girl saw all of the water of the river Yamuna turn into milk, so they began to churn it into butter. In other words, by the spreading of Krishna consciousness, or the glories of Krishna, everything becomes white and pure. 44. Popular. Any person who is very dear to people in general is called a popular man. As for Krishna's popularity, there's a statement in the first canto of Bhagavatam that deals with his returning home from the capital of Hastinapur. While he had been absent from Dwarka at the Battle of Kurukshetra, all the citizens of Dwarka had become morose. Then, when he returned, the citizens joyfully received him and said, My Lord, while you are absent from the city, we passed our days in the darkness of night. As in the darkness of night, every moment appears to be a long duration of time. So, while you were gone, every moment appeared to us like millions of years. <clears throat> Your separation is completely unbearable to us. This statement shows how popular Krishna was all over the country. A similar incident occurred when Krishna entered the arena of sacrifice arranged by King Kamsa for his death. As soon as he entered the place, all the sages began to cry, Jai, 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 which means victory. Krishna was a boy at that time, and all the sages offered their respectful blessings to him. The demigods who were present also began to offer beautiful prayers to Krishna, and the ladies and girls present expressed their joy from the corners of the arena. In other words, there was no one in that particular place with whom Krishna was not very popular. <clears throat> 45. Partiality to Devotees Although Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and is therefore not partial to anyone, it is stated in the Bhagavad Gita that he has special attraction for a devotee who worships his name in love and affection. When Krishna was on this planet, one devotee expressed his feelings in this way, My dear Lord, if you had not appeared on this planet, then the Asuras, the demons, and atheists would have surely created havoc against the activities of the devotees. I cannot imagine the magnitude of such devastation prevented by your presence. From the very beginning of his appearance, Krishna was the greatest enemy of all demoniac persons. Although Krishna's enmity toward the demons is actually comparable to his friendship with the devotees. This is because any demon who is killed by Krishna receives immediate salvation. 46. Very attractive to all women. Any person who has special qualifications becomes immediately very attractive to women. A devotee made the following statement about the queens of Dwarka. 
How shall I describe the glories of the queens at Twerka, who were personally engaged in the service of the Lord? The Lord is so great that simply by chanting his name, all the great sages like Narada can enjoy transcendental bliss. So what can be said about those queens who were at every moment seeing the Lord and serving him personally? Krishna had 16,108 wives in Dwarka, and each and every one of them was attracted to Krishna, just as iron is attracted by a magnet. There's a statement by a devotee. My dear Lord, you're just like a magnet, and all the damsels of Raja are just like iron. In whichever direction you are moving, they are following you, as iron is attracted by magnetic force. 47. All worshipable. A person who is respected and worshipped by all kinds of human beings and demigods is called Savaradya or all worshipable. Krishna is worshipped not only by living entities, including great demigods like Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma, but also by Vishnu expansions, forms of Godhead, such as Baladeva and Sesha. Baladeva is a direct expansion of Krishna but he still accepts Krishna as worshipable. When Krishna appeared in the arena of the Rajasuya sacrifice organized by Maharaj Yudhisthira, to all present, including great sages and demigods, Krishna became the sunashur, the center of attraction, and everyone offered him their respects. 48. All Opulent Krishna is full in all opulences, namely strength, wealth, fame, beauty, knowledge, and renunciation. When Krishna was present in Dwarka, his family, which is known as the Yadu dynasty, consisted of 560 million members. And all of these family members were very obedient and faithful to Krishna. There were more than 900,000 big palatial buildings to house all the people and everyone in them respected Krishna as the most worshipable. Devotees were astonished to see the opulence of Krishna. 49. 